Okay, let's talk about Blonde, the film that apparently everybody hates. By the way, I had my wisdom tooth extracted so I might sound a little lispy, but pay it no mind. Now mind you, me and my sister already predicted it back in July when we first saw the trailer. I'm not going to delve into the film itself because I have extremely mixed feelings and it low-key left me emotionally traumatized. But instead, today, we will dissect the costumes and compare them to what Marilyn Monroe actually wore. I know it's not supposed to be like one-on-one -on -one biography flick, but you can tell that they put a lot of work into recreating her real life looks. So let's see how they did. But if you like me feel traumatized by the movie and really need to relax first, how about June's Journey? June's Journey, who's sponsoring today's video, is a free to download hidden object mystery game set in the wonderful 1920s. And I'm ashamed to admit that it's also a game that I spend way too much time and energy on. <laughs> It's just exciting enough to keep me interested, but also relaxing enough not to get me stressed. Which I love. I don't like being stressed. I don't know about you guys. Not my forte. Basically, the main character, June, is trying to solve a mystery. She's trying to find out who killed her sister. With each new scene, not only you discover a piece of the story, but you also discover new settings and new locations. There is a diverse set of characters in some really cute outfits, like Virginia's green dress or young June's outfit. What I like about June's journey is that it's not only a hidden object, game, you also get to decorate your own island. There is challenges where you can participate with your club because yeah, you can also be a part of the club. So there's a lot you can do. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, follow the link in the description down below to download Just Journey for free. It is available on Android, it is available on iOS, it is available on Facebook games if you want to play on PC, and I'll see you there! <laughs> First of all, let's start off with a creative decision that I thought was a really nice touch, which was to keep most of Marilyn's wardrobe in the movie based on her original photos. And not only things like the iconic Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend gown, but also things she wore in photos taken by friends and family or photographers that she was really close with, so we can assume that's how she dressed in private. Luckily for us, there is a lot of pictures of her surviving, so they had a lot of opportunities to draw inspiration from that. And I'm gonna say this, the scenes where she's at home or wearing more relaxed styles was when she looked most authentic in the movie. Like whenever she's just in a turtleneck or a bathrobe. It's like almost working. I say almost because there are several things that don't quite work and I'm gonna talk about that later, but generally speaking the scenes where she's sort of like dressed down and is wearing less makeup maybe work the best for some reason. Which is funny because you'd think that the more makeup and the more fancy clothes the more you can manipulate Anna to look like Marilyn, but that's not the case, apparently. I think my favorite look of the movie is literally her just wrapped in this beach sweater at the beach. This was the scene that I watched and I was like, okay, that looks like her. And it could also be that Anna's body was mostly covered. I mean, Anna has a gorgeous, gorgeous figure, but she doesn't necessarily have Marilyn's body frame. I mean, everybody is different. So Marilyn's body was very soft and curvy. I liked how they made her rewear some clothes for the at-home scenes because some garments like the houndstooth pants or the black jumper or simple flat shoe wear are indeed things that she wore a lot in real life. I like the casual look of coats, especially when worn on her shoulders. I think it's a really nice touch. My only pet peeve was that the high-waisted pants were not high-waisted enough. There was like two centimeters, that would be perfect. And they were also really tight, contrary to the pedal pushers that Marilyn Monroe wore. One of the biggest things that the movie got wrong, in my opinion, is the structure of the clothes, or rather the lack of the structure and the lack of tailoring. It's something that I noticed in most of the elegant styles in the movie, for example the beige suit that she's wearing in one of the first scenes, or the dresses she wears to the movie premieres. I know Anna may not have the same, like, waist to hip ratio that Marilyn did, but for an event this scale, back in the 50s, the torso would not only be shaped by either some heavily structured underwear or a structure built in the dress, the waist would also be cinched in as much as possible. For an event like that, 
you're not eating. <laughs> so that's something that was off for me in most of the dresses. Even though they were actually recreated quite well, like I liked the fabrics that were used, but it's something that's very prominent in modern period dramas. The clothes are just not tailored enough. And it's probably because of time restrictions, like I get that. I ain't got no time to tailor every single piece that's showing in the movie, but it makes a hell of a difference. For example, Marilyn's wedding dress in the movie. It looks pretty similar to the original, and yet the lack of a solid structure makes it look a little floppy in comparison. The summer dress is pretty similar at first sight, and yet when you compare it to the original photo, it just looks cheaper. <laughs> and it's not only about the different body type, you know, there is padding if they really wanted to go all the way. But the whole point of the 1950s tailoring was to give you the desired silhouette, even if your own body didn't necessarily match the body ideal of the era. For example, in the original 50s dresses I own, the waist sits a lot higher than my actual waist, but thanks to that, I get that perfect cinched in conical 50s shape. It just creates an illusion of a perfect 50s silhouette without necessarily demanding my body to like mold into that shape. The white movie premiere dress at last has some nice structure in the upper body, but again, it's not cinched nearly enough. And speaking of upper body, uh, the boobs. <laughs> Can we talk about the boobs for a second? Why are they so difficult to get right? I don't understand it. All it takes is a single bullet bra. All it takes. I think it mostly comes from the fact that, God forbid, the actress looks funny by modern standards. It's the same with medieval men in Hollywood always being dressed in those like toned down leathery stuff style clothes, because according to Hollywood, modern audiences can't digest anything that doesn't fit into modern beauty standards and modern definition of badassery. So in most modern period dramas set in the 50s, you won't see like full-on bullet bras. And that especially sucks for blonde, because not only is it based on an actual person, so we have the comparison, we know how spiky the boobs were, but also because it's about a Hollywood star who wore high-end clothing and most fashionable silhouettes. And I have to say, Marilyn was a queen of conical boobs. Not only was she wearing clothes that accentuated that, but also I believe that was just her natural breast shape. Another thing about the 50s, I feel like half of the video is about breasts now, but I don't really mind, was that the breasts were usually separated and they would be usually situated quite high, it's higher, definitely higher than modern bras. That's something the movie gets completely wrong. Boobs are not conical and they are way too low. And again, it's not because of a different body type, because in the scene where she undresses, she's not even wearing a bra. Heck, she's barely even wearing any underwear. And I'm like, I know it's supposed to be sexy, but where's her girdle? Where's her stockings? Like, I think the absolute worst recreation in the movie was the Some Like It Hot dress. First of all, considering how many shots of topless Marilyn we get in the movie, it's kind of funny that compared to the original dress, this one is like a lot more conservative. Like in the original dress, the cleavage is really out there. Like you can see most of it. and. In the movie, not only is the neckline much more modest, the dress also fits really weirdly. I'm assuming that was due to not understanding the 60s dust 20 silhouette, which was not entirely loose and shapeless as it's shown in the movie. They did much better on two other recreations, first of them being the seven year itch dress, which was, I think, one of the only times the boobs were actually conical, and the diamonds are a girl's best friend dress, which was finally structured, but could use a lot more shaping in the waist area. One of my biggest pet peeves in period dramas is getting the hair right and blonde did not deliver. <laughs> Considering Marilyn's hair is probably one of the most recognizable symbols of the 50s, I really wish they got it on point. Especially that like I follow people on Instagram that do hair better than they were done in the movie. I think they focused so much on recreating the shape of the hairstyle that they forgot about like the basics of 50s hairstyling. 50s hair was really short, was extremely layered, and in case of actors or celebrities, it was also meticulously styled. As in, not only hours were spent on setting the hair in a specific setting pattern in which it was important which hair strand goes which direction, hair would also often be cut specifically for a particular hairstyle. Marilyn's hair in the movie is just really chaotic. And I mean, so was 50s hair, so was Marilyn's actual hair, but there is a difference between controlled chaos where 
each hair lock has its own place and looking like it was raining and your set got wet like half of the movie she just looks like her hair is wet also the structure of the hairstyle she's wearing is just a little off like there's a lot of thin longer strands of hair instead of thick flat short and soft locks Marilyn's real life hair looked soft and dry and the movie hair looks kind of crispy. I don't know how to describe it. The thing I think they got right was the little wave that she got above her widow's peak. And I thought the softer, gentle and preferred blonde's hairstyle was also pretty well done. But like they didn't show any transition between her styles. And if they did, honestly, I didn't notice. Like early 50s Marilyn and early 60s Marilyn is like two completely different hairstyles. Whereas in the movie, it looked pretty much the same. One more fashion scene they committed was in the scene where Mel Marilyn and Miller are receiving guests and she's wearing this elegant cocktail dress. I thought it looks a bit modern, but okay, if that's how they wanted to underline that she really wants to make an impression, that's fine. But she then walks the beach wearing sneakers with that dress and I'm like honey she would never while 50s were a lot more relaxed than previous decades and sportswear was more prominent than ever you still wouldn't mix elegant with casual like that like that only happened in like 70s when people started mixing different styles she would probably either just wear something casual because it's a casual meeting or she would just change into something more comfy and then wear the sneakers but like this was just a really off look for me and finally the makeup I thought the makeup was a bit strong sometimes but I get it, it's an iconic look and it keeps Anna looking like Marilyn but Marilyn was also known not to give a flying fly uh, about wearing makeup in private for photo shoots, sure but when she's just chilling at home, especially on her own, I don't understand the need for her to wear like a full face, red lipstick and fake lashes. Especially that the film focuses so much on Marilyn just being a persona of Norma Jean, but it never shows Norma stripped from the Marilyn look. But, you know, it's not my movie. <laughs> anyway, that's my opinion! <laughs> that's about it, that's all I have to say. Also, don't forget to download June's Journey for free using the link in the description below. And I'll see you next time. Bye!